Okay, so in my last shop update, I discussed the camera, uh, the GoPro camera with the, on the gimbal. And the background noise that I was getting uh, off of the camera microphone. And I went through a bunch of tests and um, <clears throat> actually took the camera out of the gimbal, um, didn't get the noise put an external mic on the camera um, and didn't get the noise. <clears throat> now that external mic was a large road mic that's used for a tripod. What I have now is I've got a small um, external microphone that fits onto the camera. It plugs into the uh, USB port and um, it just uh, is on the camera and I am using it right now. So what I'm gonna do is shut you off right now, take the microphone off, turn it back on, and continue on to talk about it to see the difference between this microphone that I have on now and the regular camera mic when we come back. So here we go. Okay, and I'm back and this is using the camera microphone. And normally what I get is this kind of a high-pitched humming noise in the back when um, I'm use, just using the camera microphone with the gimbal. Now if I take the camera off the gimbal, I don't get that noise. So I'm ass assuming that it's associated with the gimbal and it's being transferred through the framework because I can't hear it when the gimbal is just running. I, I can't hear any noise other than when I do a video and have the audio through the camera. So here we go. I'm going to shut it off and we can see the difference. Okay, one more time. I just went over and listened to both videos, the audio on both videos. And in neither one of them did I hear that noise. Now, the only thing that is different now than was different before is it used to be uh, when I filmed was w like winter time and all the doors were closed. So what I did is close the doors and let's try it again. This right now is with the external mic onto the camera. Now I'm shooting with the external mic taken off. So we are using the camera mic now. And I want to see if there is that background noise that I used to get in other videos. Okay, over here at the welding bench and um, I'm going to give up on that thing. I hear a background noise uh, regardless. Uh, sometimes it's high pitched. Sometimes it's just a kind of like a low rumble. I, again, I'm gonna give up on it. Uh, you know, maybe I'm hearing the uh, birth of the universe. Um, if anybody knows what I'm talking about, leave a comment. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, Mac Tool had a sale going on. They are, uh, once a month they have a sale going on, but um, they had these air cutoff tools, and I wanted one of these for a long time. This long, narrow one, because there's places where you try and get a normal cutoff tool into, and, and the body of the tool gets in the way of what you're trying to cut. <clears throat> so they had a sale going on, buy one, get the second one free. No. Again, it's Mac Tool, so um, I probably paid more for one than you could have brought to it someplace else. But um, regardless, I wanted it, I needed it, and I can use it. So we're going to go with that. Um, let me bring you back to something else. We're over here at the A3 Cummins engine for the haul truck build. And I know that uh, this isn't going to be part of the shop. Uh, well, this what I'm going to explain is going to be part of the shop update, but uh, it really has nothing to do with the build. 
These are the injectors into the cylinders. And as you can see, there's two of them out. The first one I got out fairly easily. Now, sometimes injectors, get, getting injectors out of diesel engines are a bitch. Easier on the 5.9 because, well, the, the reason why I had to take them out is because on this motor, the, uh, there's a head bolt underneath the injector, so you have to get them out. On a 5.9 Cummins, the injectors are put in a different location and uh, they're not covering a head bolt. So you can actually pull the head off and leave the injectors in the head. But anyways, I regress. I got the first one out. I could not get the other five to budge. So what I ended up doing is building a tool. Um, and what it is is a nut that fits over the um, the injector uh, where the injector uh, fuel lines screw onto, and then I put this over there to hold it, and I'm able to run the nut down and uh, pull the injector out. <clears throat> now, like I say, these things I can't even get them to budge. Um, so the first injector that I pulled broke, but I guess I, I talked to somebody and they said that that happens fairly often, so not to worry about it. But anyways, I just kind of wanted to show you that tool. Now before I made that tool, I did something else. As you can see, this injector has a flat spot on it where you can what you do is try and get a bar underneath it and try and pry it up and out of it um, using that flat spot so let me show you what i did kind of destroyed one of my tools but um, let me show you what i did prior to making that injector puller as part of my toolbox i had a set of pry bars now they're not the pry bars with the handles they're the short um, pry bars um, drift pin lineup punches and as you can see this thing is well it's tapered but flat and you can use it to rock and pry something up well this big one what I did this big one used to be exactly like that one what I did is came over here to the mill and milled a slot in it that fit around that um injector where it has been milled off and flattened so that it fit around that injector so that i could push it around that injector and then try and pry it up and i'll take you back over to the engine and kind of show you what i'm talking about as you can see that injector has that flat spot on it so what i did is notch that so that I could try and pry that up that's how it comes out but it would not budge that way I tried tried and tried and tried and can't get uh, those five like I said the first injector came out with no issue the other five I cannot get to move so um, what I did is try this and when that didn't work I went to this uh, puller style thing. Um, but the first injector that I got, like I said, broke and, uh, but I talked to somebody and they said it was uh, fairly common for that to happen. Just have to get new injectors. Like I was planning on getting new injectors anyways, but it'll just drive that factor more Okay, the other thing that I did this morning is I built this, uh, made this board. And what happens is when I haul stuff that are long, uh, haul long steel, it would, the same thing would happen with boards. Haul long steel, these ramps don't slide together. Uh, there's a space in between them. So sometimes um, when I get thir uh, 25 or 30 foot um, pieces on here, the part from the deck back here is overhanging because the ramps, I can't get the ramps in far enough. 
So what I did is built this board that uh, will straddle the ramps to support the back. And um, I'm going to try it. Now, my in original intention was to build it out of uh, steel. Um, have channel steel going across here with uh, two pieces to, to hold the ramps together and uh, I guess you would call them gussets uh, yeah um, to hold them together but what I did is I had this wood laying around the shop actually I think it belongs to my grandson but um, it was laying around the shop and I figured what the heck I've got to make a, a, another steel run tomorrow I'm not sure what's going to be on it um, and I decided to make it out of wood as a trial to make sure it worked fine before I made a permanent one out of steel. The other thing is storing it. Now I, I can store it up underneath the trailer. Um, up in front of the wheels you see there's those uh, angled braces that come down to support it and I can put it in there and just uh, bungee it up in there. Well, actually, technically, you're not supposed to bungee it up in there. It's supposed to be strapped up there. But, um, anyways, I'll strap it up there and try it out. I'm not even sure if I'll need it tomorrow, but I'll have it with me in case I do. Now, the, the reason, kind of the reason I did this is because the last load that I, I got, when, when I go to this place, it's all different varying materials. So the last load that I got they had some strapping uh, 25 foot uh, lengths of strapping and when I say strapping it was like two inch or two and a half inch wide uh, probably three sixteenths um, I don't think it was an eighth it was probably three sixteenths thick two inches wide 25 foot long and they had them bundled up with some other things but what happened is that's the load that I uh, picked up in Pittsburgh and then actually had to go up to Toledo and pick up some copper sheeting and uh, bring that back too. But what happened to that strapping is even though that it was uh, uh, banded together, um, that strapping kind of came out and drifted back and, and was flopping around back here. No, I could have tied it up, but having, um, I, I, as you tell you the truth, I actually never noticed it until I got back. Um, I got back and noticed it. So I could have tied it up, um, and that probably would have helped support it. But having something back here um, that it can lay on, now I can move this thing forward too if I want to. It doesn't have to be back here. It can be... Uh, put up there or put anywhere uh, even up further if you wanted to so um, that will kind of prevent it and then what I'll do is that it'll, it'll lay on that and I'll uh, just strap it down back here too so that it kind of uh, s supports it but I thought I would just show you that I've got my truck in the shop because I'm going to wash it. Now, it rained out this morning, but I'm still going to wash the truck because uh, it hasn't been cleaned out in a while. It hasn't been cleaned and cleaned out in a while. And I've got to make a run to Pittsburgh again tomorrow, pick up some more steel and bring it back to Buffalo. And I just uh, can't stand leaving in a dirty truck. Um, the, uh, mainly I want to get the inside cleaned out but I am going to wash the outside the wheels are um, getting pretty shitty and um, the truck needs to be washed